Hey, thank you for watching. I wanted to ask you, did you ever read that book on the five love languages? I don't know about you, but I was actually recommended by a marriage counselor. He said, you gotta read this book. And that book really and truly opened my eyes up to so much, helped me with my marriage, but not just my marriage, it helped me in my family relationships with my parents, my sister, my nephews, I mean, that book is amazing, and if you've never read it before, it talks about you know five different types of love languages that we all speak, and how certain ones mean the most to you. In fact, of the five, you know number one is quality time. You know that's the person who feels the most loved when you're just with them, and I tend to lean towards that one some. In fact, quality time meaning you don't have to be doing something all that great and fabulous; just the fact that they're there with you just makes you feel loved. Another one is gifts. You know, a lot of people express their love by giving gifts. Well, if you don't know that and your love language is quality time, then you could be offended that they won't even spend time with me. Yeah, they give me roses, but I just want you to spend time with me. Well, when I began reading this book, realizing that's my dad's love language is he loves to give gifts. That's how he says, I love you so much. Here's a gift card to go shopping or whatever. But then the third one is acts of service. Now that is my mom's love language. In fact, she would never, and still to this day, she would not come over and just watch a movie, but she will do laundry, clean the baseboard, she'll get the cobwebs off the ceiling fan, <laughs> or she used to, but she just loves to express her love by doing things for people. A fourth one is physical touch. There's some people who just, they have to be touched, they have to be patted on the back, they have to have a hug. Um, they just feel the most loved when you just physically touch them. And then the fifth one is words of affirmation. And that's the person who just needs to be encouraged with words. And they'll say things like, you know, did I do okay? Did, did it sound stupid or did I sound okay? You know, I, th I can think of one minister who's very famous Every time he gets off the stage, he asks everybody, how'd I do? Did it come out okay? Was that good? Did you like it? But you can tell that's his love language is words of affirmation. Well, that book, you know, went all over the world. So many discussions about that book and a lot of people, you know, it saved their family relationships, discovering the languages that mean the most to them. Well, I discovered that there's actually a sixth love language and it's God's love language. Let me tell you what it is. John 14, 15, it says in his word, if you really love me, you will obey. So I believe God's love language is obedience. That touches the heart of God more than anything is when you simply obey what he's telling you to do. You know, I read a statement years ago. I actually heard Joyce Meyer say this and I wrote it down because it just, I don't know, it just struck a chord with me. But she said, a wise person does right now what they're going to be happy with later on. A foolish person or an unwise person does whatever feels good right now, but they're almost always never happy with it later on. And then she said, later on always comes. In other words, whatever God's telling you to do, and you might say, Terry, I don't know, but I do think deep in your heart, you have an indication, you have an idea of something God may be speaking to your spirit. But if you don't obey, you stay miserable. You know, when I was a little girl, my dad had this little statement. He would say to me and my sister, every time we needed to obey, he'd say, do it quickly and quietly. And that just became our little theme. You know, anytime dad tells us to do something, do it quickly and quietly. In other words, don't complain. Don't waste your time. Just do it. And he makes me think about, even to this day, my daughter Cassidy, um, we have this little habit, every time the laundry's done, I put all the laundry, the folded clothes and everything, I put them at the bottom of the stairs and her bedroom's upstairs and she knows when that stuff is piling up, her job is to take it upstairs and put it all away. Well, there are times it's sitting on the stairs and I'll say, Cass, you need to do your chores. Cass, you need to put your laundry away. And she'll say, Mom, I will. Let me take a shower and finish my homework and then I'll do it. And then I'll notice the next morning she didn't get it done. I'll say, Cash, you need to get your chores done. Mom, I'm in a hurry. I have to get to school. Can I do it when I get home? Here's the deal. Partial obedience is still disobedience. Even if there's times Cassidy will say, Mom, I did half of it. Partial obedience is still disobedience. The other point of that is delayed obedience. When it takes Cass four days <laughs> to put the laundry away, 
delayed obedience is still disobedience. And you know, normally I pay her an allowance, I give her an allowance for doing all of her chores, but delayed obedience, when it takes you five days to put your laundry away, <laughs> you don't get rewarded for disobedience. Well, that's just the way God is. You know, I don't like that scripture necessarily in Deuteronomy that says, in a nutshell, do what I tell you to do and you'll be blessed. Don't do what I tell you to do and you're going to live under a curse. You know, and that's the truth. And the curse brings with it misery, confusion, torment, um, just that uneasiness on the inside where we know we're not doing something right. Well, I just want to challenge you with what the Lord challenged me with. Obey. Do what God's telling you to do. When you obey, it is as if you have a key now to unlock the door and open up the blessings of God. That's how powerful and that's how serious obedience is to your future. If you disobey, you know, and it could be anything. It could be God told you a year ago to get out of debt. So you paid off one bill, but now you're deeper in debt than you were a year ago. Partial obedience is still disobedience. God may have told you to get out of a relationship, so maybe you stop sleeping with the person, but you're still going out. Or maybe it's not even to that level, but you're still texting. You're still, you know, you like all their pictures on Instagram. You're still communicating with that soul tie, and God told you to end it. Partial obedience is still disobedience. So I don't like to be hard on you, but I know how God had to be with me when there were little areas of my life where I wouldn't fully obey. And I shared on a previous podcast that God will not advance His instructions for your life be on your last act of disobedience. So if you're saying, God, I want to move on, he's saying, then obey the last thing I told you to do. So obedience brings with it blessings. It brings with it the reward. Obedience is the key to knowing the will of God for your life. So obey what God's telling you to do. Now, if you're enjoying these podcasts, subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, so I can keep you encouraged to go after your dreams. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.